everyone, it's Margaret here to share a project uh, journal that I've just completed. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to mention that there have been uh, some inquiries about custom uh, orders on journals, and I'm pleased in the uh, confidence people have in my work, and uh, I just wanted to mention though that I do stay away from custom orders, not because I don't want to make them, but I do get myself all stressed out about it if I'm, I'm under the gun uh, to make something for someone, and I try to just um, let my creativity come to me when I feel like creating, and um, I will continue to make journals, so if you see something that you like, I'm more than happy to, to respond with any inquiries. But um, I hope you don't, I hope you don't take that the wrong way, that I, that I won't do custom orders. It's just the way I am, my personality. I, I just don't, um, I don't handle the, uh, the stress too well uh, at this stage of my life. Uh, anyway, uh, another thing too I wanted to mention, there are so many wonderful supply stores out there now. I am amazed at the uh, trims that you can buy now. They're just out of this world gorgeous. So many people that um, I've met through YouTube that have stores and I encourage everyone to have a look because I, I was just blown away at the beauty of some of the trims that are available and um, very reasonably priced. And the reason why I'm saying that is a lot of times people ask me uh, where I get my trims and laces, that they are unique. But I have been collecting for a lot of years. It's not, um, it's not that I go to a thrift shop and just uh, buy supplies and then come home and make something. I have a lot of stuff that I've accumulated over the years. So for me, it's better that I use up what I have um, and um, just because I buy them at thrift shops, though, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're they're cheaper. A lot of people say, oh, well, it's a thrift shop item, so it has to be cheap, I mean, price-wise, but that's not always the case because I'll buy a whole garment sometimes just to take a tiny trim off of it. I know it's silly, but if I see something that I really love, then I have to have it. So that's why I've accumulated a lot of stuff over the years, and... Um, I'm going to use it up, um, but of course, uh, if uh, if I get a chance to uh, place an order on uh, on trims, I certainly will because there is a lot of great stuff out there. So have a look at the stores; they are great. Anyway, I just completed a, another journal, and this one here is in the shape of a teapot. Um, there you have it. I sometimes run out of ideas. I like to do things that are a little bit different and out of the ordinary and I decided to try um, shaping it like a little teapot and it was fun but I tell you it was a pain because um, I'm always trying to keep the integrity of the shape with, uh, with the, the journals that I make and it's very very hard. It takes extra time sometimes to keep, to keep the shape intact. Anyway, the cover, as you can see, I've used a, um, um, a lace fabric, a vintage lace fabric for the base, um, and I have embellished the front page with a three-dimensional lid. So what I did is, I, from the pattern, I cut out an extra piece for the lid, stuffed it, and embellished it, and then glued it back on to give it a three-dimensional look. And I really think that's so pretty. I've embellished it with pearls and some uh, um, wedding dress applique uh, here, and a little gold trim to um, take the shape of the of the lid. The corner is. I didn't want to get it too fussy um, because, again, I wanted to sh be able to show the spout without covering it up too much. So I concentrated the decoration on the corner with vintage laces. I made some uh, flowers and these little ribbon rosettes that I had in my stash. And um, I uh, fanned out a little bit of uh, vintage lace here. And that's it. I just tried to keep it as simple as possible to show the, uh, the teapot effect. On the, on the very rim here, or the tip of the uh, spout actually, I used the dangle trim to simulate some pouring tea, and that's kind of cute there. So there's the cover. Again, I'll do this one page at a time. 
The first page I've used um, as a centerpiece um, a sweet lady with a um, cup and saucer. She's drinking her tea. And again, I've embellished the page with some uh, um, cut out uh, crocheted pieces, as you can see. Again, I've left them flapping, which is kind of interesting. I used a shabby chic flower with a um, rhinestone centerpiece there. Uh, I created the little satin petals to accent the corner. Some um, um, pleated um, chiffon trim that I tea dyed with some pearls and here I've used uh, a string of uh, Aurora Borealis uh, rhinestone um, to embellish the top of the lady. Now I've also used again the um, silver thread to um, accent her jewelry pieces, her necklace and her little headpiece. And there you have it. The next page Again, you can see that the center picture is, ah, strings, uh, eventually they'll go away. <laughs> um, the center page um, is a picture of a couple of ladies having their tea and it looks like they're gossiping. So they say nothing is better than tea and gossip and that's, that's that picture there. Um, I've enclosed the picture with some um, wedding dress applique and a cutout piece of doily that I have layered and at the bottom here I took again the um, the same doily uh, cut out a piece and then accented it with um, a little uh, bow sequined um, piece from um, another project that I had previously done underneath you can see there's some um, uh, ruffled trim that I cut out of a blouse and of course the usual covered buttons, a little flower in the, in, the, uh, in, in the side here. And this was actually again from a wedding dress that I dyed. It had the uh, string of pearls dangling from it already and uh, it came in really handy on the top there with a little uh, lace um, handmade flower for the top. Can see the you can't really see the uh, the handle, but you will at the end when I show the back and front pages again, and that's that page. The next page, again, a pretty vintage lady serving tea. This page is really uh, kind of tattered looking. I love it. I've taken some uh, pieces of doilies and dyed them or not stained them and a ruffle piece here, then layered another piece, a uh, cutout piece on top. Um, this was a beautiful uh, doily as well. It has some, um, um, I don't know what you call it, like a, anyway, um, I can't think of what that's called, but it's really pretty, like a netting, a netting effect here. I embellished the corners with uh, some pearls and uh, again, some uh, bling that I've added to um, create a little bit of sparkle and interest on the page. Some trim on the bottom, a little bit of um, fringe here, and there you have that page. You can see the center. I've just embellished the, the center with some cutouts of uh, doilies and appliques. The following page has a photo of a couple of friends enjoying a nice cup of tea. Again, framed her them with uh, some little uh, trim, some cutouts from doilies and other trims that I had. Uh, underneath there is this uh, doily, which is in the shape of a, like a, like a um, triangle. So I used it and let the piece dangle on the bottom. I put a little pearl on it. These little uh, dangly um, balls here to add a little bit of interest, a uh, crocheted uh, flower, uh, added pieces of trim in there, and a vintage earring that I added in the center of the flower. Um, the spout area, I made a little satin bow and tacked it down with uh, some of my favorite vintage gold and silver and pearl trim that I have in my stash. And there you have that page. 
the next page again a sweet lady a vintage lady enjoying her tea and contemplating uh, some thoughts here um, I took some uh, ruffle pleated trim that I had and I added just a little bit of that sparkle paint on the very edge tip of the um, of the trim to give it a little bit of sparkle which I always love and these pieces here were actually from a um, a lady's top I very carefully snipped out the appliques from it and uh, it has beading and I glued it uh, on the top and the bottom to um, to frame or accent the, uh, the the picture this is a rope trim around here again some sequin pieces from uh, a prior uh, uh, ladies uh, top that I had and uh, that's that page the last page is the pocket page again I repeated the use of the uh, vintage doily the netting one that I had cut and I used that as the main pocket piece and then I just trimmed it with uh, some other other trim to seal everything off I usually stitch the pocket page by hand um, I don't usually glue it because I'm always afraid that if you start to add some items in it it could become heavy and you know come could come apart so I usually like to stitch my my pocket page so some of it is sewn and most of it is glued however and here I've added a little dangle pearl earring another little main pearl here and wedding dress applique a little bling and as you can see that's the pocket page the back again I've just left it uh, plain having used the uh, the base uh, vintage lace uh, which is a little textured on its own so again to keep the integrity of the shape of the teapot I kind of just left it alone the spine short little spine where the uh, handle is I've just created a uh, center ruffle on some lace embellished it with uh, a little string of pearls let them dangle and that's the spine now as a little feature you have a little teapot but you need a little cup to go with it so I um, used a, a template for a teacup and actually printed it on some printed fabric that I had and it worked out really well so I I stitched the um, the lines of the cup to give it some dimension and uh, in the front and the back with some gold thread and then I created a little tea bag as you can see it simply says keep calm and drink tea and that fits right inside which is kind of cute and then I've attached this on um, the handle with some seam binding and with that also uh, with a separate bow I've added a little tiny spoon which I've embellished with some um, little appliques and there's a little cup and saucer charm here um, on the top of the spoon don't know if you can see it that I've included on the spoon so that always makes it a little whimsical I love to add whimsy to the journals it just it just gives that little element of surprise when you're uh, when you make something and I love that so there you have it my little teapot just a little teapot journal and I really think it's cute and believe me everything I make I want to keep but I I really am running out of room so for Mother's Day this year I told my guys don't buy me anything if I come across a nice little shabby chic uh, uh, dining room hutch a little one for my craft room uh, I think that I would be thrilled so that I can display some of my goodies that I've made and received in there so that's my teapot journal. I hope you like it and um, thanks for watching and I'll be back to share some more projects with you soon. Bye for now.